Are you a high performing parent, entrepreneur, or high achiever in pursuit of excellence? Welcome to The Nexus Podcast, a podcast custom tailored for families like ours, driven, affluent, and eager to lead extraordinary lives. From rockstar stay-at-home moms to high-producing CEOs, we choose to model success for everyone we are surrounded by. We prioritize health over sickness, embrace a vitalistic lifestyle, and seek to tap into the limitless potential that God has bestowed upon us. I'm Dr. Daniel Kimbley, your host, and on this podcast, we'll uncover the secrets to living a fulfilling and abundant life where you and your loved ones can thrive physically, mentally, and spiritually. Together, we'll forge a path to greatness and unleash your God-given capabilities. Get ready to say yes to a life of true prosperity and well-being. This is The Nexus Podcast. Welcome back to another episode, and I just never get tired of hearing my daughter's voice in that intro. It makes me crack up, it makes me giggle, and also makes me realize how quickly she grows, uh, as any of you who are parents listening know very, very well. And what I want to talk about this week is actually my daughter, because I just got back from a camping trip with her, and her and I spent Friday night, sorry, Thursday night, Friday night, out in this amazing wilderness park with lots of camping, lots of hiking, very, very open right here in Orange County. It's kind of a little hidden gem. I've asked like every client I take care of if they know about it and most people don't. Uh, so I'm not going to share it on this episode. You can talk to me in person if you really want to know. But I bring it up because while we were camping this weekend, uh, they have this beautiful playground and in the inside of this park. Um, and Coco, you know, she's like, daddy, I want to go on the tire swing and she's getting, as she gets older, she's getting a little bit more adventurous and she's doing things that quite frankly, I would have seen her not do a year ago. And one of those things is being able to swing on her own. And it's been so cool because I don't know where she learned it. Um, we did not teach her. She just kind of figured it out on her own that she can pump her legs and swing like any normal person. But the part that I thought was so interesting and that I had to bring to you today to talk about is the idea of momentum and what it means to have momentum and what it means to not have momentum. Because what I saw with my daughter, which I'll share with you in just a second, I think can relate to not just conversation of chiropractic, like you know I'm always going to talk about because I'm so passionate about it, but also a conversation of life and success and what it means to be able to live a life worth living and not just being alive and you know i'll talk about living and being alive in just a second but what came up for me and i'm at the park and my daughter you know she gets tired on the tire swing and she's like daddy take me over to the swing set so we go over to the swing set and she gets on the swing and i I just watched her literally be able to pump herself and swing on the tire swing and she goes dad you got to push me so I can get started. And I said to her, I said, Coco, you can do it on your own. Start swinging just like you would. And she couldn't figure out how to get the momentum going. And there's this interesting thing about momentum, right? Is that once you get it, it's very, very easy to maintain, but it's difficult in the beginning to get moving in the right direction. And so I noticed this like real time with her. I'm watching her and she's struggling. She's frustrated. She's mad at me because I won't help her. And finally, I'm like, you know what? All right, I'm not going to just make my daughter cry. I'm not going to be a horrible parent, but I'm going to give you a little boost and then see if you can do the rest. And so as soon as I gave her just two tiny little pushes, she's like, Daddy, push me higher. Um, I told her, Coco, I don't need to push you higher. You can start to pump your legs. And she figured it out. And she kept the momentum and she could swing. Literally, she's sitting there for like 15 minutes swinging back and forth while I'm just there having a conversation with her while she's on the swing. In the middle of nowhere, no one around. And this idea of momentum, right, that just kept popping into my head. I'm like, how interesting is it that most people would have been Coco on the swing where they would have given up? Or they would have been like, ah, it's not working. I'm just going to quit. And she wanted to do that. And I encouraged her not to. And I actually let her get to the point of tears and being very frustrated so that she could learn that anything worth doing is going to take perseverance in the beginning. And perseverance is a skill. And interestingly, perseverance is a skill that's housed within the prefrontal cortex of the brain, which you know is what I always talk about on this on this podcast, because it's so important. And so I'm there with my daughter. I'm teaching her the skill of perseverance. I'm teaching her the skill of grit and willpower and determination. And then also, when I need to, giving her just a little boost. And as soon as she got that little boost, she was able to keep the momentum indefinitely. And so this is what's so cool, right? Is I'm sitting here and I'm like kind of just thinking this out loud right now because I didn't even take it this far before. 
How many of us will say that we're committed to doing something? I know I'm guilty of this often um, and have been in the past most definitely. I'm better now, but not perfect by any means. Is How many of us would sit and say, you know what, I'm committed to doing X, Y, Z. I'm committed to doing this thing and I'm all in on it. And then we're all in on it until it starts to get tough and it starts to get difficult and we don't feel like we have any momentum and it's not going anywhere and it's boring and no one else is noticing and we haven't gotten any congratulations and we haven't noticed any results. So we just give up and we go back to our old ways. And what's so interesting about it is like all Coco needed was a little boost and she needed a little boost from her dad, all right? And so I'm not saying you, if you're listening to the podcast, need a boost from your dad, but like who could you get a boost from? Who could you get support from? And it's such a chiropractic principle. It's such a healing principle in the body is like we have to build momentum in the system. Regardless of where someone's at, building momentum is key. It's much, much easier on the front end when we're taking care of a brand new newborn baby whose mom realizes that it's important to have their kiddo's nervous system functioning at 100% so they don't have to build momentum later. But on the back end, we see so many people who struggle and they're like, how come you can't fix me in just one visit? How come my thing can't go away in just one visit? Why do I gotta show up multiple times a week? Why do I have to spend time? Why do I have to spend money? And the reality is is that anything worth doing is going to require commitment. It's going to require you to build momentum. And that's where we really come into the equation. It's like, it's the boost, right? Like I always talk about when we talk about this principle of healing, everybody already has within them the innate capability to heal themselves. The body knows how to heal itself. God gave us a gift of healing. And that gift of healing can only be expressed when our body is not in a stressed out state. That gift of healing can only be expressed when our body is in a rest and digest state. And so there's levels of it, right? So like if you're at 50% versus 100%, but I don't think anybody would disagree with me when I say that if you scraped your, fell down and scraped your knees and you woke up in the morning and said, oh man, you don't have to remind yourself to heal that thing. It's going to heal on its own. You don't have to go, oh, I need to make sure I heal my knee today. I need to make sure I heal my scrape today. I need to make sure I heal my stitches today. Your body just does it because your body knows how to heal itself. It's an ingrained gift within you provided to you from God. And so the same is true, right? It's like if you need a boost to get yourself out of a fight or flight or a stressed out state to get your body back into the healing state, that's what the boost is there for. And then when you do it long enough and you continue to practice just like my daughter, She's been working on this skill of being able to swing on herself by her own for who knows how long. She's been working on the skill, but she still needs the boost in the beginning. And as soon as she has the momentum, it's easy. Everything's flowing. Everything's flowing. She can swing as high as she wants to. She can slow down if she wants to. She doesn't need my help for any of it, but it's only in the beginning. So I have two questions for you on this podcast, and it's a short one, right? But my first question is this. It's like, Where in your life do you feel like you need a boost or you feel like you need help, but you're not asking for it? Because what I know and what I've learned about myself over the course of the last year is that I am a person who has always refused to ask for anything from anyone else, mostly because I had a bunch of trauma when I was a kid that I felt like I need to just take it all on my own. I can handle it. I don't need anybody. And I had all of this like this pride, I guess you could say, around being the person who I don't need any help from anybody else. And the reality is, as soon as I got some help from some small places, when my chiropractor started adjusting me, wake up my brain, when I had mentors when I was teaching who were helping me learn about the brain and helping me learn about the classroom and help me think about how kids learn, I had these little boosts that carried into momentum. And the same thing can be true for so many things. Like I'm doing a bodybuilding show at the end of this year, but it didn't start, like I've been working out literally since I was 18 years old. I could care less about working out when I was in high school, didn't care about it. I remember one coach, I'm gonna use the word on here, so forgive me for using the language, but I had one coach call me a pussy in the weight room when I was you know, 15, 16 years old because I wasn't lifting like he thought I was supposed to lift. And so, that transition into this thing where like, I didn't like to lift, I didn't like to work out, but for the since I was 18 years old, I'm gonna be 39 here in the next week, and the reality is like, literally, that's 20 years of my life that I've been building this consistency, building this rep, building, and it's momentum, it's easy at this point, like, yeah, sometimes I still have to force myself to go to the gym, but the reality is, is like, anything worth doing is going to require consistency. It's going to require grit and willpower and perseverance in the beginning. And remember that that skill of grit and willpower and perseverance is, it's housed within the front part of your brain. 
And so if your front part of your brain is weak, which is turned off, by the way, by stress hormones, then we're going to have less drive. We're going to have less grit. We're going to have less willpower. And as soon as we wake up the brain and we strengthen the brain, willpower comes back. But willpower is only a piece of it because we have to have the willpower to get us going and then we use the momentum to keep us going through. And, and it's just like my daughter on the swing, right? So one, where do you need a boost? Like where in your life do you feel like you need a boost? And two, where are you trying to shortcut yourself by real, by like telling yourself the story that, oh, I should have already had the results. Oh, I already should have had the house. Oh, I should have already had the spouse. Oh, I should have already had the car. Oh, I should have already had the finances. Oh, I should have already had the relationship with God. Oh, I should have already had whatever it is for you. And the re reality is, is that you never put in enough work to actually build momentum in the first place because momentum takes time. And I would argue and have you consider that anything worth doing in your life, it doesn't matter, exercise, diet, building a business, some kind of skill, self-help, a relationship with God, it literally doesn't matter where it comes from. It requires consistency. It requires momentum. It requires motivation. It requires drive and grit and willpower and perseverance. And like I said, those are all housed in the front part of the brain. So my friends, I love you and appreciate you. Get up today and start to build yourself some momentum. And if you need help, I would love to be the person to help push you. Not even from a chiropractic standpoint, just from a, I will be there to be by your side and encourage you and root you on because I know that I have needed it in my life and it's been a game changer for me and I know that it can be for you as well. My friends, I love you. Have an amazing week and I'll come at you again next week. Peace.